Hey guys, so we've got another nib review today. Today we're taking a look at the Jalot 303. And it is another pointed pen nib. It's got some fins notched into it. And recently we took a look at the Jalot 1068. And I really like that one. In fact, that is the one you see in the picture. So we are inking in the Danik Inktober notebook. And I always caveat my nib videos now with I'm using this because I'm trying to use up my supplies. I'm not using it because I am a fan. And if you're looking for a good dip pen, ooh, come on you. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, this 303 wants to be default really difficult dang oh i have a feeling this is the one that just like wouldn't work at all when i was doing that like exploratory video let's see let's see let's grab us a handy scratch sheet of paper and if this nib doesn't work i apologize and i'll pull another one out for the review there we go it is a troublesome starter And I'm even using the holder that came with it. Oh, it's super flexible. I'm starting to learn that for someone as heavy handed as me, I am not really into the very flexible sort of softer nibs. So, oh, really? As soon as I get it working, it decides not to work. Well, already. I can't recommend it. And it might be the Denik paper. I was going to say that when I, that I recommend instead Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol. That is what I prefer. But I'm doing this weird thing where I'm like trying to use up what I've already started. So, unfortunately for me, if the nib just performs super poorly on the Denik, it means I have to turn around and do another review on the plate just to be sure it's not the paper. And there has been quite a few of these nib videos where I actually liked it just fine on the plate. This is probably one of those types of nibs. But it is doing okay now that we've got it going. Now I am trying to be really light handed with this because it is a flexible nib and it seems like when I use flexible nibs bad things happen. Paper gets nipped, railroading occurs at a prodigious rate. So I'm trying to be very light handed so I'm probably not demonstrating the full flex of this nib. That's okay honestly. You really don't want to push a nib to the point where it's constantly railroading on you anyway. It's not going to do you any good. And this nib came in a larger set. It was from a set of Galat nibs or Gillot nibs or Gillot. You guys will just have to tell me in the comments how to pronounce this one. Um, it came in a set of like six nibs and I purchased them from Sakaido in Tokyo in 2012. So I've had them for a while and since I am doing nib reviews I decided to try and basically play clean the fridge and that is when I try to get every single well with clean the, with clean the fridge I try to clean out all the vegetables and meat and stuff into one dish and still make it taste good. With this, I'm just trying to review all the things in a certain category that I've put off for a few years. And Inktober is always a really good time for me to kind of blow through my comic supply reviews. Now, this nib seems to put down a lot of ink, which to me would not make it ideal for comic pages because then you've got long dry times and you've got panels that are wet. And it's just, I find it hard to work around a page when um, you have areas that are very 
wet and are gonna take a really long time to dry. And I find that dip pins take much longer than brushes. So even if I were using, say, this nib to, um, I don't know, do a fill, I would instead just use a brush. But now that I've got it going, it is not the worst of the nibs we have reviewed. And I don't even know if I was on camera all that time. I do apologize. I will be from this point on. Um, it's not the worst. I mean, it actually writes. And I think there was a hunt nib at one point where I couldn't even get it to write. So I had to move on to something else. And it's behaving well enough on this paper. So really, oh, here you go, up to your old antics again. There we go. So this might be the sort of nib that sort of takes breaking in. I've had crow quills that need a little bit of use and breaking in before they'll perform consistently. but it does dump a lot of ink on the paper, which is causing this Denik paper to buckle a little bit, which is making this paper a little harder to ink on because it's getting a bit wavy and it's not really holding steady. So if you like working on thinner papers, this might not be the nib for you. that at its finest pressure is going to catch a bit on the paper which can make it a little harder to use so that is the galat 303 from the sakaido galat set i hope you guys found this nib review to be helpful i hope you found it to be informative and maybe even inspiring if you're interested in learning more about pointed pin nibs dip pins and comic illustration or cartooning. Make sure you check out some of my other nib reviews in my advanced inking techniques playlist. I also have tutorials on how to ink. So if you're looking for a little bit of a kickstart, you can check that out there. I was taught to ink while I was attending SCAD for graduate school. So there's a lot of really helpful tips and tricks in there that might not be obviously apparent in how I currently ink. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, it's a pleasure to hang out with you guys, and I hope to see you guys again tomorrow with another Inky Nib review. Bye guys!